to Tenha. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Rise of Incarnates stream. This is Michael and uh, thank you for joining us again today. Uh, I apologize for it being, you know, uh, three in quick succession, but I'm going to be uh, out of town in Atlanta uh, coming up, so uh, we had to do it a little bit early. Uh, but uh, from now on, we'll probably do it once a month regularly when we have something uh, like a new character and other new features to show off. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Uh, the next thing that we want to tell you guys about, so if you turned in last week, you saw that we did a uh, target marker and some of these uh, basic techniques to kind of help you improve your game and understand a little bit more. So now we want to take it a little, one step further and just kind of explain uh, from the start of the battle uh, what kind of decisions goes through the player's mind as he's uh, you know, selecting which enemy to lock onto and attack, uh, etc. So today uh, we have some special guests. Uh, start off we have Takechi, you know, he's our star player. Uh, he's a little bit salty after last last time's match where he wasn't able to do as uh, well as he thought he could. So he's back for revenge. Uh, and we also have uh, you know, our, our resident producer uh, Daisuke as well, but we have two other special guests who uh, have a lot of experience working on 2 and 2 uh, 2 versus 2 games, uh, especially the Gundam that some of you guys love so much. So uh, we'll have them uh, help us explain some about the game and uh, you can address questions periodically not only to me, but uh, to them as well. So, one of them is the director of the game, uh, Ishida, and the other is uh, the planner, uh, Noguchi. So, both of these guys, sorry, it's not Japanese, so we don't say San or whatever. Uh, but uh, they're here, they're very good at the game, and they can give you a, a different perspective than perhaps me or uh, Dice Game. So, uh, let's get started. So, Takechi, you ready? Okay. So the, this actually starts before the match, you know, what, which character you choose, uh, also your partner. And then uh, you won't know until you're actually matched up in, if you're in ranking, but when you see the briefing, then you can see your opponents and uh, you can kind of uh, think about your team composition, but also uh, your opponent's team composition and, and you and your partner, which one you want to go after, what kind of strategies you want to use to defeat them. So uh, as you all know, or maybe some of you haven't noticed, on the briefing screen you can voice chat here. Uh, as well as see the, uh, the skill grid. You can even switch between skill grids if you have a, an extra one. So that's a good time to do all that strategizing on this. And when you're ready, just uh, press ready to start the match. Just stay Okay, so this team we have uh, Mephistopheles and then Noguchi is playing Slayer. So. Uh, this time, since Slayer is pretty weak against uh, Odin, get chewed up and try to get direct at him, uh, they strategized and decided that Mephistopheles will go after Odin and kind of keep him busy uh, while Slayer tries to uh, you know, go on to uh, fight against uh, uh, Fenrir. So, as you can see, Odin's shooting attacks are quite strong. So, uh, Takichi is using a variety of different tactics to try to get close by. And then, uh, so you can see the dodge attack is one. If it uh, successfully dodges the first shot, then that succession of shots is all uh, automatically dodged. But, you know, he's having a hard time. Uh, he's going to have to have his partner kind of jump in. And, uh, you know, Slayer has a, a really cool stun attack. So, if a Slayer is successful at doing that, uh, it will give uh, Takichi some time to close in. Once he's down, once opponent is down, Takichi uh, isn't at the moment, but one thing that's uh, going through your mind is your opponent's down, they're not going to attack you, so you want to switch and use the target to change to kind of see how your partner's doing. Uh, and this helps because if your partner's getting you know, beat up on, you might want to go uh, help them out. Or on the other hand, once you're you know calming your opponent, uh, there is a possibility that the opponent's partner will come and try to save them, so you want to kind of keep an eye on them as well. Uh, and while your opponent's down, that's a good uh, timing to try that. So now he's going to try to go after Odin some more. There's a stun attack, but unfortunately, Takichi was down. But uh, if you finish the tag combo there to uh, knock three stock off the, the enemy's team pool, life stock. So now all they have to do is do that one more time, and they can win the match. So he's going to try to keep uh, Odin busy, because if you don't, then he's just going to keep firing uh, barrages against uh, both you and his partner. And then uh, Slayer, you know, he's only one stock, so limited health. Uh, he's going to try to keep uh, Fenrir busy, but at the same time try to stay alive. Uh, you know, he's only one stock though, so if he dies, it's not a big deal. 
So Takichi is going to try to not take too much damage while closing in on Odin. You can see he's using shot attacks to kind of keep him in place to either dodge or to guard uh, while trying to move forward. And he's asking for his partner now to come in to help him out a bit. Because Odin is quite powerful and uh, obviously being the game director he is very good uh, at Odin and making the full use of it. Slayer is almost dead though, so he's going to try to you know, throw some shot attacks. They, and then, see, they stayed on Odin. So basically, uh, you can see the progression of the match trying to um, to get into close range to Odin because that's what you know his particular character was good at. But one cool thing that uh, maybe you haven't noticed is the, the lock on the target uh, marker. It lets you know when you're in range to lock on the shots, right? Well, this is different between Odin and Mephistopheles. So Odin will actually lock on first before Mephistopheles. So he has even a little bit more of a, a challenge to try to get in close. So, uh, you know, you can see he's unlocking <laughs> customization items as well because uh, we haven't played on this account so much. So you can see kind of the flow of what he's thinking about as he progresses through the match and uh, knocking down the opponent. Uh, ultimately, uh, he wasn't strong enough to, to go against Odin alone and he had to rely on Nogichi's help from uh, stun attacks and such. So that's, you know, the, the basic uh, flow of a match and some of you guys are maybe getting the hang of that but uh, maybe some aren't yet. You could tell that the game is, the attacks and such are quite simple, but it's this kind of strategy and who you choose to go after and what kind of techniques you choose uh, at each point, which actually determines uh, victory when you're playing at a high level. Okay, so uh, thank you guys for that. Next, I think we'll, we'll go into some Q&A. Skip Q&A? Okay. So next, uh, I think we'll go into uh, a custom match. So we're going to just have, since we have such high level players, uh, we want to give you guys a, a look at, you know, I'm not going to uh, have the, the first match we did was just a set piece to kind of demonstrate how you play. Now we'll just have no restrictions. I have four of them go at it and you can see uh, the game director and the planners and such and how they actually play their own game. Cool. Uh, so I think Takichi We'll have him play as Lilith, because there was a quest from the audience. We'll see how good he does with him. I haven't seen him use Lilith, but he should be up to the task. And the other, uh, Nobuchi and Ishida, and also Daichan can uh, choose their own favorites. So, uh, okay. Can we stop? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Stays up there, also. Yeah. And you know, I saw in the audience, uh, some of you guys were mentioning beforehand that it would be cool if you could play as a custom match. Uh, me and College Cockney are also thinking similarly, so if we can find some of you guys who have a decent connection and who are you know, in the same matching region, uh, yeah, maybe we can make that happen, that'd be kind of cool. So we'll try it out, maybe we'll be contacting some of you guys through the Steam forum, and we can set up a, a custom match and see if uh, the lag is, is low enough to play. That'd be cool to do on a future stream. So uh, keep your heads up. So here we go. We've got uh, Takechi as Lilith. One stop, very quick, melee specific. Uh, and then uh, Nogich is playing as uh, Mephistopheles. You know, he's a pretty standard all-around character. You guys are pretty familiar with him from the tutorial. Uh, Daisuke is playing as Fenrir. He, that's his favorite, I think. They have the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, nice cu <laughs> customization here. So, uh, they asked if they can, you know, take the gloves off, and I said, go ahead, this is your normal match. If you lose, you're going to get a lot of trash talk, so. Two of these people will lose, though, so unfortunately. <laughs> Let the salt commence. <laughs> so you can see, uh, Takichi did a good job of knocking his opponent down and then going after the other opponent. Uh, but he hit from behind. Uh, Low life leads him to get destroyed. So. But he's gonna try to stay away at the moment and fire the, the special two attacks to you know try to land him on his opponent without uh, getting hit too much. He's beaten up on Dice Gate's finger at the moment, and now he's powered up, so he's in his incarnate ability. Uh, shot attacks are the most useful, though if you can get in close, uh, you know she does regenerate health, so there's, there's a few options you have. He's gonna try to run away to the weaker finger. <laughs> Good choice, Tucker. 
<laughs> and he's got his awakened gauge, so you know, he can use that at any time to replenish his uh, his techniques, but also uh, his, him and his partner regenerate health, as you can see in the bottom left. That's kind of a cool bonus. You know, she's very fragile, but uh, she has these kind of uh, techniques throughout the match to, to stay alive. <laughs> he's really beaten up on that kid at the moment. <laughs> But hey, that'd be my choice as well. Rather than go against Ishida that's something that's probably easier. So, yeah, but, you know, he's he died again. So Takich has died twice. Uh, Nogich is staying alive and doing a really good job. But they're still ahead. Now if they just, uh, if they can kill Finra one more time, the match is over. So you can see he's he's really going after Finra. Especially since Daisuke is in the human form, you know. Hey. There you go. <laughs> so, and, you know, that's that's a very viable strategy. Uh, Takechi, he, he went after the opponent he thought uh, wasn't as good. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I guess Ishida-san couldn't really save him there. So, that is a vi valid strategy. If you can tell during the match, you know, how your opponent's reacting to different things and how they move, uh, that's totally one way to do it. Good choice. I would have, you know, preferred for him to go after Ishida-san, but... Ishida-san <laughs> <laughs> Well, we said gachi in Japanese means, you know, go full on, so... I guess that was his, his best chance to win. What's up? No, I didn't. So, we'll have uh, first of two, two wins, two... Uh, what do you call it? So, two out of three, right? So, first of three, uh, we have one more match, so if... Takechi and his team can take it, then it's it's finished. But uh, uh, Ishida and his team still have a chance. So let's see what the game director can show us. All right, you guys, uh, we've got Takechi has now chosen Ra, uh, three cost character, but very versatile between you know switching through the modes. Uh, his partner Nobuchi is going to stick with Mephistopheles. Oh wait, no, he's going to go with Grim. Cool choice because you know he's a very cool character, very underused. But if you can use him effectively, very good. Uh, Daisuke has chosen. Uh, he was there at Ares for a second, which he was using very early on. But he's gone to Fenrir. Okay, dice game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fenrir. Uh, uh, it's Odin, so Fenrir works well. Okay. That's so why yeah. I chose uh, Fenrir. You gotta think of team composition since Ishida was gonna go with uh, Odin, he chose Fenrir. Uh, it's a good compliment, I think. So it should be a very interesting match. Okay, let's start. Yeah. So again, we have uh, Takichi with Ra. And uh, we have Nogichi with, fin uh, sorry, about that, uh, Grim Reaper. Then uh, Ishida has uh, Odin, and then Daitan will be playing as Fenrir. So you can see, uh, you can kind of guess what they're going to do. Like, for example, Grim Reaper is a support type of character, so he's not going to really uh, be right, right up in your opponent's face. Uh, so I think Takichi will go with Ra, maybe the melee-centric uh, mode, Trouble and try to, to get close to the opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Grim Reaper kind of, you know, <laughs> cause chaos from behind. Uh, that's kind of, you know, the main rule. But sometimes, you know, your opponent will think the same and expect the same. So you might want to do something different than the conventional rules to throw them off guard. We'll see, though. So now Takichi is, uh, you know, switching between the modes. And, and again, he's going to go on to Daisuke. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Fenrir is a, a strong character. Uh, Takichi is down, unfortunately, unable to... Uh, you know, make good use of that tag, tag combo. But uh, he's he's going to focus here on uh, actually Isha uh, with with Odin. So that is a good choice if he can knock down Finn. Because you do want to kind of stay up on Odin and not let him just fire as much as he wants to. But uh, Isha is really good positioning uh, away from the battle while dropping the laser. Actually, if that hits, you know, it does massive damage. <laughs> And you can tell Odin also will be switching between these two uh, modes that he has. Uh, you know, depending on the battle situation, his distance to the opponent. Uh, we would like to see a laser, but it is a cool attack. Uh, Takich is getting pounded here. You know, he's a three cost, so obviously the, the opponent's going after that, that quick win and trying to defeat him. He's got a lot of health. And he's using a special attack to keep the enemies off. But he's got Awakening now, so it should be interesting to see if he chooses to use that. The opponent's uh, Awakening is in effect at the moment, and he's going to try to counter that. Melee centric, doing massive damage. He's going to home on a home in on Daisuke again. 
Yeah. It's hard to know that she, you know, kind of a failed attempt there to, to beat up on Christ. Uh, Isha just totally sees through it, dropping the satellite laser on all of them. Uh, you know, this does damage Isha's uh, teammate, but, you know, there was more of a, a payoff, and he was able to kill all the ponies. Bam. So, apparently, you know, Takichi is uh, really upset with uh, Noguchi's gameplay there, so we'll see. <laughs> You know, it's, it's seeming like it's like our last uh, time when Takachi wasn't able to, to come through with the victory, but we'll see. Okay, one more. Decide the winner, right? Yes. First, first to two, uh, three. <laughs> so one more. It'll be kind of interesting to see the team composition that comes up now. So who Takachi will choose? Green Reaper. Green Reaper? No, oh. Oh, 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 miss, miss, miss. <laughs> Takachi, you're miss, mistaking sorry, so sorry, much. Sorry. Uh, so this wasn't the character you wanted to go with, but uh, it, it'll take too much time to reset and to pick different characters. But um, so we'll just go as we are. Actually, she has chosen uh, Brunhilde again. She's not used that often, but he's very good. So maybe you can pick up some some things to add to your uh, repertoire to kind of uh, become strong with that. Uh, Daisuke has actually chosen Eris this time, uh, and then we have uh, actually Ra and same matchup as Grim Reaper. So this should be kind of uh, a different outcome. Instead of uh, Ishida's you know long range uh, barrage of attacks, I think uh, now we'll see Daisuke kind of trying to stand off and use uh, Ares long range to his, uh, his you know full effect. Uh, but then again, you know Takichi sees Daisuke as a weaker opponent, so he's going to try to go after him and knock off the three, because that's you know three off the team stock as well, uh, where Ishida's much better, and he's also only two when he's competing. But he's halfway there, so. I think he's going to try to avoid Ishida while at the same time going after Daisuke. But Ishida's very mobile uh, with Brunhilde. You can see he's kind of chosen to go after Takichi. Uh, you know, Takichi is very good, but you know that's three right off the lob. The uh, team stock pool. So. But you know, uh, here we, we have Takichi. He's kind of staying away. He's going to do the bombs towards uh, Daisuke. If he can get all of them to hit, you know, that's massive damage. He could knock two off right away. Where? Oh, yeah. So he did. And uh, he's just got a full health gauge here. He's going to go after Takuji to try to knock three off the gauge and make a comeback. Uh, it's going to be tough, though. They're pretty far behind. And then Ra just went on with his awakening. So uh, he's going to try to pressure this to the, you know, uh, the final. <laughs> but then we've got double awakening here. Uh, it's hard to tell, you know. He's just he's taking a lot of damage off of Takichi. He's hope and Takichi is just, you know, taking the punishment, hoping that uh, Nobuchi will step up and finish off the corner. Because Daisuke has got a sliver of life left. <laughs> I hate to be Daisuke at the moment. And he's targeted by both of them. You can see with the target marker. But it's close, you know. He's just really good. Uh, and they were kind of ignoring him a bit too much, and he was able to take a lot of uh, life yeah. off the oh. gauge. <laughs> it was close, but at the end, uh, Ishida wasn't uh, able to, to make up for, for Daisuke's imbalance, but uh, that's how it goes. We'll just have to get Daisuke to, to play with the, the planners a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I mean, we had a, a good uh, composition here. Grim Reaper is a very cool character. If you guys were watching some of the stuff that Noguchi was doing, uh, maybe it'll give you a hint and how he's supposed to be played. We notice a lot of people online, they just want to pick a character that looks cool, go to the front, go to the opponent, start meleeing, and that's just obviously not the way the game's played. So uh, hopefully you can kind of get an idea of how 2 on 2 is uh, effectively played. So that was first to three. Uh, I, I believe College Cockney has something else for us. Uh, what do you want to do? Some questions? Or? Okay, let's, let's go in some Q&A. Uh, Nathaniel? RJ, I believe it's the same Nathaniel we've talked to often. So, uh, is the Lilith costume in the store? Uh, the one that uh, you're talking about, the black one, the really skimpy one that he was wearing today, right? I don't know, did they not get? 
Uh, actually, yeah, it is in the it's in the store. So feel free to go yeah. browse that. Today. Yeah, it's, a, it's newer. It's one of the newer ones, so you haven't seen it. Um, but you know, because I like uh, it. Wow. Cool. So I mean, that's how it is. Lilith is is one of the only, uh, well, not the only, but the the few really female-looking characters. Brunhilde is a more uh, not not as revealing as this, I guess you could say. Good way to distract your opponent, huh? Uh, let's go on to the next question. So, uh, Big Apple? Is it Big Apple? Uh, Mac, Mac 258. Uh, the question is, can you play uh, Rise of Incarnates on an arcade stick? Or is it only still recommended for Pat? You can, Daisuke, you can play an arcade, or the, the stick, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, so actually, you can play on keyboard and mouse pretty effectively. You can play on the pad, as you can see, all these guys are playing pretty effectively. Uh, arcade stick can be used, but uh, we've seen some questions in the forums where people are trying to bind the buttons like a Gundam. So uh, you know how we have the shift to kind of alter the attacks and such. Uh, so you would have to use it in the same manner. It's not like Gundam where you can push, uh, you know, two of the buttons in combination and get the attacks you're wanting. So just keep that in mind, uh, and you can still use the stick. Uh, but we, you can't uh, bind it differently than uh, the game allows for in the options. So we have to do it. Okay, uh, another question? Yeah, good idea. Um, since Brunhilde is not very used, uh, maybe we can have uh, Takichi uh, show us some, some combos of Brunhilde. Uh, this is a request from Nat Joey? Nat Jowey, I think. So yeah, we'll, we'll honor the request. Takichi, can you show us, or maybe even Yusuke uh, san uh, Bear with a sec. We're going to go into tutorial, character tutorial, because that's the easiest way to kind of show it off. So you know, she's very mobile, but uh, maybe some of the one of the reasons why she's underused is it's kind of hard to see some of the combos. Uh, actually, I was uh, talking to Yusida the other day that uh, he said online, he actually plays online quite a bit, so some of you guys are maybe matching up with him without uh, realizing it. And he said he sees this one combo over and over again that uh, was in the character tutorial. I think that's the one actually Takichi put in, so he was like, Takichi, why did you put the combo in? That's the only thing I see online. So hopefully we can give you guys some more options uh, to use uh, against your opponent, so you can so, uh, take it away, Takichi. That's a very standard one, you know, where he's gonna throw her up here and then, uh, he, uh, you know, go in with the follow up, uh, jousting attack. He just, he didn't connect in. Hey, Takichi, can you, uh, can you do that attack in the character tutorial on the uh, Isasanga Naka Izai Dixit? Yeah. That's the one that uh, is very prevalent online apparently. <laughs> so you guys have all pretty much seen that. Now let's let's do something just for fun. It might not be a whole lot of damage, but just something kind of interesting. Ano damage is not going to be good. So combo is not going to be So, you know, obviously most people are going to go with a high damage combo, but sometimes it's good to just do something flashy for fun. Just to get it in. So this is one option we have. Kind of cool, huh? Not the number, I'm sorry. But, you know, she's kind of simple, so she didn't have a whole lot of uh, very in-depth uh, combos. It's more about uh, your positioning the, the, the map and uh, what you're doing to your opponent with your one-on-one uh, -on -one attacks. <laughs> <laughs> so Nobuchi is telling uh, Takichi here, there is kind of another Nisei Kombo, uh, uh, sorry, flashy combo. In Japanese it's called Nisei Kombo. So he's doing that just... It's pretty difficult though because of uh, you know, the placement and also the undulation of the map. But it's pretty cool if you can get it to work. Cool. Uh, so while we're doing that, you want to field another question, uh, College Cockney, or you want to go on to the next portion? Okay. Uh, the one in blue? Yeah. So, Jared Vegas. Uh, 
I want to see Mike with the mesh hairdo next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, maybe it'll look a little bit like the Backstreet Boys, I guess. But uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm getting old, so I hope to have enough uh, back <laughs> to flesh it out. <laughs> we could try it. Daisuke's already got the Finra look, so maybe I'll try it. <laughs> Another question? Or? Okay. Uh, so, Big Apple, 3 a.m. Do they have LP cost amounts for characters? Oh, very good question. Uh, that's something I wanted to bring up. It's uh, something, a big topic in the forums, as I've noticed. Uh, you guys, you're, you're pretty aware of the game, so you already know. Uh, LP. Characters will be able to be purchased uh, with LP, the in-game currency, uh, starting this month. So, when? 25th. So, the next update, that's when Luke is coming as well, uh, as a playable character, that is, is when you'll be able to purchase. Uh, as far as a cost in LP, um, we're pretty close to, we have a final amount, uh, but we're trying to still, uh, Daisuke and I are, are thinking uh, about it, just to make sure there's no unexpected things, like it's uh, too out of reach for most players, or on the other hand, there's not some kind of easy way to break the game and, and buy all the characters pretty quickly. Uh, so we'll let you know uh, soon. soon. Uh, but we're trying to give you guys the LP boost and such so that you can prepare and try to... Because we want you guys to play the game and have fun with it while we're waiting. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, effectively, you gain as much LP as you can so that you can buy a favorite character uh, when the features in on the 25th. Uh, but, so keep an eye, I guess, on Facebook. Uh, and also, probably first on the Steam forums. That's where we have our, our most in-depth interaction with you guys. So we'll let you know when, when it's decided. But it'll be impl implemented the 25th, so please look forward to that. Okay, next question. Uh, okay, same one. Big Apple, 3 a.m. Uh, I was at EVO last year and had a good uh, time at the ROI booth. Will you be at EVO again this year? It would be great to see the fighting game community pick this up heavily. Uh, there is a good chance. Um, we're still thinking about it. Uh, we did have a very good booth last year when we had the game. It was pretty unknown at the moment. You know, we haven't uh, been doing mar a lot of marketing push at the time. Uh, but you know, Daisuke was there. I was there. Uh, we saw the booth was just packed. Uh, you know, every hour of the day, people really enjoying the game. Uh, and, and the game is hard to understand. I think at first the in depth and the complexities. But the fighting game community was something that it really clicked, uh, and they really got it. I think, and it was really enjoyable for us to show it. So we're thinking about it. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna be there already for Tekken 7. It's it's been announced as one of the official games uh, on Evo Circuit or on Evo uh, the China itself. So trying to get a, a booth there in which uh, possibly we could have Rising Incarnate. You guys could play the, the latest pool. Uh We'll see. I'll let you know when it's, it's uh, when it's final. But uh, we're trying to get the game there for you guys. We'll see how it works. Uh, you now gotta talk to Joey, uh, Mr. Wizard, about how much space they have and such. But we'll we'll try to make it happen, and I hope to see you there. Uh, Dice Gat, I don't know if he'll be there. We'll, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, maybe we can take one of our star players like uh, Takichi. Maybe we can meet him in, in person. Maybe get some games against him. Okay, uh, College Cotton, what do you have next? Okay, uh, we've got Skill Kill 107. When will we be allowed to destroy the devs? Uh, so I went into this a little bit earlier. Um, I don't. We haven't really mentioned this officially, so uh, currently, you know, the game's not released in Japan, so we're kind of playing from a, a development environment. Uh, currently, the the region, you know, we, we have regions where you guys have uh, you know, kind of divided into these regions, uh, trying to think about uh, connection speeds and pipelines and such, so you guys have the optimal experience. Uh, currently, uh, our development uh, environment is linked to uh, North America. Uh, so what this means is for you know East Coast, sometimes it's a little bit difficult, not just because of the time difference, but uh, the distance, uh, because the game is, is uh, synchronous. So you know it's not like other shooters and stuff where it matches up periodically. This is constantly matched, and if there's uh, you know inconsistency, then it won't work well. So the game requires very good uh, connection speed. So depending on some of you guys, I noticed uh, Ishida has played with I think Modest Mouse who's in Florida, I believe. So uh, depending on your connection, it is possible. Uh, West Coast is much easier because of the, the connectivity there. So uh, we, we want to do it. Uh, unfortunately, we can't uh, match with you guys in, in Europe or some of the other regions, but with the, uh, currently with the U.S., it, it might be possible. So it'd be kind of a, a bad stream, though, if we, you, we try it all of a sudden and it's really laggy or it doesn't work. So we might be contacting some of you uh, more vocal guys out there. 
uh, with good connections and try to do some matches beforehand. And, and if it works out and it's a, you know, the, the connection speed is no problem, uh, we might invite you guys on the stream as a guest and you'll have a chance to play us. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, and let us know you want to play. You know, we can uh, ask each other and nobody should come back or uh, talk to you guys game yourself. Uh, even College Cockney if you want to. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can make that happen. We'll be contacting some of you guys to try to test it out. Uh, College Cockney, what do you have coming up? Okay, you want to go to the next section then? Okay, so next up, we want to show off Loki. So you guys have seen him. Uh, any of you guys who are new to, to ROI can notice that there are characters in the arcade mode that you see ahead of time. Uh, first it was uh, Zeus, uh, and then Slayer, and then now it's Loki. So he's currently playable as a CPU character. Uh, not playable, but you can play against him. And uh, he'll be playable to you guys uh, coming up on the 25th of this month. So we want to show you what kind of attacks he does and give you a little bit of background to uh, you know, uh, get prepared. So, uh, thank you. Let's just get out of the tutorial real quick. Sorry about that. And menu uh, So I want to show you guys a quick video that we have that Takichi took. So on the Okay, so we have uh, Takichi has taken a video for us where he showed off some of the features of Loki. Loki, you can see, is kind of a, a fat bastard. He's eaten before the match, right? Uh, he's not American, though. He's actually uh, Russia. He's actually from Russia. So uh, he's a very melee-centric character, uh, very slow. His dash is kind of unique in that you know most people go horizontally. He goes kind of s slightly uh, upward as he dashes, so you can get a little bit of uh, altitude as he's going. Big stomach, big stomach. <laughs> so, uh, you can notice his two costs is another important feature. And his health. His health is a lot. You know, he has more than Eris, who is a three stock. Now he's doing his main attack. Uh, you can see on the right is the, the first one. Uh, he's only got one of these at one time until it reloads. Uh, but it stuns. So, you know, he can chuck that out, apparently, and stun. Now he's uh, sucking his opponent in as his another attack. So uh, you, want, you can do this actually from across the screen. He turns them into a, uh, kind of a, a pile of lava, and it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's mainly meant to just keep your opponent uh, from moving. And then you and your partner can fo focus on uh, your opponent's uh, partner. So it's a, a good way to create a two-on-one situation. Next one, so you know he's even doing this from the air. Uh, and you can even do this, uh, I believe, while you're being attacked. So even though if Mephisto was going to you know, shoot him or melee him, he would uh, do a little bit of damage, but ultimately Loki would succeed in uh, drawing him in and spitting him out. Uh, this is another attack. Uh, it's using the, the uh, right trigger. It's one of the special attacks. And you can see he was holding it to kind of charge it and make it uh, more powerful, kind of like how Mephistopheles has. Obviously, you know, that's a... a, a if you're not careful, your opponent can kind of, it's a good chance to beat up on you. So you want to choose when to charge it and when to just release it quickly. You can notice he's eating periodically. There's a pizza and he's drinking something in the, the big barrel there. And the gauge, uh, the red gauge increases. And so the cool thing about him is he can do this at any time. Uh, obviously you're vulnerable while you're eating, but you do this to power up your attacks. Because some of the powerful ones, like throwing the big uh, ball of lava, uh, and the body slam uses this, this gauge. Uh, but as you can see, you have to be careful. He ate too much, he fell on the ground, he's vulnerable. So uh, he's very strong, has a lot of health, but very slow. And uh, the way that you play him is you gotta try to get close to your opponents, whether that's through the, the attack that kind of draws them near you, or they come closer. But at the same time, uh, when your opponents aren't uh, paying much attention to you, to kind of eat, to keep that gauge full. But uh, his melee is very damaging. Uh, so as long as you're controlling that gauge efficiently, uh, you can continually damage your opponent uh, with a two-stock character. You can see it's just devastating. So that's uh, he's making effective use of that. That's the Ford melee. So that actually, uh, you can see now, he throws them away uh, just to kind of keep them there. 
but the, the throw attack, there's two different ones. So one of them sucks him in and then spits him out as a ball of lava, and one of them is the forward melee where he jumps, grabs him, and throws him. The forward melee one actually lets your partner uh, do a ca tag combo if you want to. Or you can e actually follow up with that ball attack if you want to. Then the back melee is that kind of uh, stomach dive that he's doing now. And you can do that successfully as long as you have enough gauge. But your gauge will run out if you do it too much, so you kind of want to be careful of that. Good way to move around the stage though and surprise your opponent, smashing them into the ground. <laughs> Pretty. So there we go. Oh, and to, this is obviously, since he's a new character coming the, the 25th, uh, we have some codes to give out to you guys. Uh, you can't use it until he's been updated, but we will uh, be uh, keeping an eye on the chat section to, to choose a lucky winner. Bam, just massive damage, knocking him into the air. Then he does a special uh, range attack to kind of follow up. This is the one where it throws, he can suck him in, or he can let his partner do a tag combo. So that's kind of a, a good option, you know? A lot of times if you do a tag combo launcher, your partner's not watching and they end up following you, do a very uh, uh, not effective range attack. But with Loki, you can kind of follow up with his uh, special range attack to do more damage if your opponent's not, or I mean if your partner's not watching. He's got a rolling attack too that uh, actually ends in uh, kind of a tag combo state. So if your uh, partner's watching, he can help you out. So he's on flames, but he's not really taking damage because of that. It's more of just uh, keeping your part, uh, keeping your opponent immobile, because that's very important in this uh, two-on-two game. Uh, isn't often as possible you want to make this situation where you and your partner can gang up on your part, your opponent, uh, without worrying about their partner coming to the rescue. You can see how much damage he's doing to Mep Mephistopheles over here. So if you can keep your your range that you want with Loki, the one he specializes in, which is pretty close range, uh, very effective. It's just all about maintaining your gauge, though. Okay, so yeah, let's start with some of the the customization items first. So you know, obviously, when uh, Loki is updated on the 25th, uh, he'll be in the free rotation, so you guys will have a, a little bit of chance to try him out. So we're gonna give out some codes to you guys so that you can customize it. Okay, College Cotney, who do we have? Did you choose someone? Okay, so no. the Q. Pizza. Shout pizza, shout pizza. Shout so pizza! Pizza! pizza. Sh first person shout to pizza. shout pizza in the chat. Pizza. Because he's a fat ass that eats pizza and powers up. So, pizza. First one to shout pizza. <laughs> it's not just pizza, you know, you can eat pizza, burgers, he drinks stuff. We got a winner? Okay. Uh, not Jowie. Not Jowie. Congratulations, man. You won Loki. That's the first. Uh, not, not, was that Loki or customization? Customization. Customization. So. Uh, carry this. It's okay. Uh, since we had, did the shout type, then he's just going to pick a few of you guys who are the first uh, right. to shout it. So the next one. Uh, Cherubidis. Cherubidis. Cherubidis? Cherubidis? Is, that, is that right? Sorry if I got it wrong. Uh, so you get uh, actual uh, customization item as well. Uh, congratulations. congratulations! Congratulations! And the next winner is Overlord. Next winner, Overlord uh, 12B. Yeah. You also get a uh, Loki customization item Woo! to try out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you guys, uh, if you've been tuned into the past streams, I mean, I'll just mention it again, but. Uh, with Twitch, you have to enable uh, messages from a person who's not registered as a friend, so please do so, so uh, College Cockney can uh, send you the code uh, via message. And keep in mind, you can't redeem the code until the 25th when it's updated. Uh, and I believe we chose for you guys, um, there was a few different customization items. I actually want to give you guys the fat bastard one. He's like, uh, he's shirtless and just disgusting. That would have been cool. But, uh, okay, we, we chose a, a tiger shirt. He's kind of... No, not everyone went the fast, fat bastard uh, customization item. So uh, we have a few more, actually. So I, I think announced towards Overlord 12B. The next one is Kano's, Kano's Zero, and Big Apple 3 a M, uh, 3 A M. Sorry about that. So you guys uh, will also receive Loki customization. <laughs> <items>. <laughs> hey. Hey, yep. Okay. 